everyone. My name is Rishit. I'm Meher. And I'm Ethan. And we're here to introduce you to Remy. Ever since coming to Purdue, we've loved exploring around, but most places are hard to get to by walking or even using the bus. So a lot of us end up using Vios or Uber to get around fast, but these are incredibly expensive and even require a startup fee. For example, a simple ride from a residence hall to the Memorial Union would cost up to $5. This simply isn't sustainable for students like ourselves. In general, we can see that transportation around campus is unreliable, time-consuming, and expensive. Building the scooter rentals can be pricey and cumbersome, and there are thousands of regular bikes sitting idle, which could better serve the community when used. In fact, 93.6% of Purdue students we surveyed said current bike share options like VO are too expensive to use regularly and would like a cheaper alternative. And that's where Remy steps in, as a two-product, one-easy-to-use platform solution. Our solution combines a smart bike lock with encrypted NFC keys and an easy-to-use mobile app, enabling owners to list their bikes and securely lend them out. Renters simply open the app, find a nearby bike, and unlock it using our NFC technology. No fuss, no hassle. And to safeguard everyone, Remy enforces guaranteed responsibility so bikes are returned safely every time. Bike owners make money by lending out unused bikes, while renters save time and money accessing convenient, affordable transportation. Best of all, the platform is designed to be seamless for both parties. These are some of the main features of the Remy app side. First, you can pick a trip by selecting a bike out of several bikes on your area on an interactive map. You can see things such as a bounty, which is a reward for bringing it back to the owner's location, as well as you can start your trip. Now, during our trip, we can see our time spent and the cost of the trip, as well as something called a bike curfew, which is the time that the owner needs his or her bike back by. Instead of exchanging real keys with the owner, the, the key is now a virtual key, which is used in the form of NFC. And so when you're getting your bike and starting your ride, you're going to use NFC to unlock the bike. And then once you're done with your ride, you're going to use NFC to lock your bike back to a bike rack. And lastly, you can see your entire trip in the form of a receipt. Now when it comes to the Remy Smart Lock, we put a lot of time and effort into ensuring that this lock is secure. So to start off, your phone will communicate with the lock in NF using NFC, which is encrypted with AES 128-bit technology, and that allows you to start communicating with the lock. And so that will open up the, the new forms of communication, which is BLE, where we exchange the UID of the lock, and we're able to exchange different keys to ensure that when we're unlocking the bike, you are you and the bike is the correct bike that you intend to unlock. And so this basically protects the owner because their bike will be only unlocked by the user that will be paying for that ride. And the user is also getting the right bike for them. And so this whole lock system is controlled by a PWM servo, um, which basically handles the locking and unlocking of the actual chain on the bike. So basically to sum up the renter side flow, basically you're going to find a bike that you like that's nearby and you're going to click ride and that will allow you to unlock your bike through NFC and Bluetooth and then and you're free to use the bike. Remy is a wonderful amalgamation of several technologies on the firmware and software sides. So starting from the firmware, we use NFC and I2C communication to talk between the Arduino and the NFC reader. Um, and then we use PWM to control the servo. And that's all on the microcontroller side. And in terms of the software side, we developed the app using Flutter, where we had to handle BLE-related communication with the Arduino as well as Firebase for our database and backend, and Google Maps for locating bikes on the map, as well as directions, as well as the use of Gemini and OpenAI to run our price estimation model for your bike. Starting off with the demo, signing in as an owner. So here when I pressed, I you can see that it created, uh, sent me a verification email, so it's secure for Purdue students only. After that, it lets us input our Purdue ID. Once again, making you secure for everyone at Purdue. And then after that, we can put in our phone number and then select that we're the owner and pair with the lock on our bike. Then we press submit and we can register our bike over here, which we can add as a proof. Once we add that picture, uh, you can put in the bike's model so let's say it's a trek bike 
and then it will calculate using an AI model uh, what the price estimate should be. So it says 20 cents per minute, and then we'll accept that and press submit. We can also choose uh, times that we don't want our bike to be available to the market. So here, let's say I have class between 11.30 and 3, then I can, I can block that time or else I can also turn off a day if I'm extremely busy or completely make it free for everyone. Uh, then I finish my setup and I'm prompted at the home page. After we are logged in as an owner, we can see our current location on the map and we can also see our bike status. So here we have a bunch of information about our bike. We have the model that our bike is, um, also indicating that it's our bike. And we can also choose to take put it on the market or take it off the market for personal reasons. We can also sign out. So here we are back to the create account page where we're going to create an account as a renter. And here we can see we can add our Purdue UID and set our date of birth and then also add our phone number and we're going to pick a renter this time. And as you can see, we cannot submit until we have correctly put in our phone number. And here we can see we have just logged in. We have our indicator of where we are. And also we have a lot of a bunch of red markers of where bikes are around us. We can see that which bikes might we might want to choose to get where we want to go. And see we have a bike option here. Um, but basically, I just really want you to consider like the common scenario of our renters here. Um, let's say like I live in McCutcheon, the farthest dorm from academic campus, and I have a meeting scheduled with my professor in around like 10 minutes. And the buses are packed full, Uber's charging $15 plus, and VOs are out of service for the winter, and they would have charged a hefty amount anyways. And just walking the cold for 30 minutes is just not a good option. And in these dire situations, like what am I to do? But but we are lucky to have Remy at our side so that I can book a bike in around less than a minute, ride for four to six minutes across campus for less than a dollar twenty at the convenience of a phone tap. Not to mention exercising, promoting sustainable transportation, and supporting the university economy between students. So basically, on the app, we can uh, pick our bike where we want to go, and we can see um, that we can find the price per minute as well as the bounty, and we can see some home directions to find uh, where the bike is, um, and we can look on, Google, look on Google Maps to use on to to do that. And we can also pick see where the uh, bike is for our case here. Our bike is right next to us, um, and then we can also pick which kind of format we would like to go. So here, after this, we'll be transported to the lock, lock page and we can unlock it. You can see the bike is unlocked and now our bike timer is ticking now. And so we can see um, some useful information like where we are, um, the bike price rate, the bike bounty that we might earn, um, a little more on that later. And also like the timer as well as the, the amount of money we are spending um, as the time increases as per the rate that was determined before. As well as a bike curfew for the next curfew. So at the moment, um, the next curfew will be by 9 a.m. So we have to make sure to return um, this bike by 9 a.m. Um, so we keep on uh, riding and uh, go to our destination. Eventually, we'll get to stop our ride and then we will be able to uh, tap and lock the phone. And there we um, lock it. Obviously the, uh, the chain will be put back into the lock. And so now we have to, to make sure our bike is in a safe place. We have to uh, take a, we can either choose a photo from the gallery or take an image. And right here, we're going to make sure we take an image. And the purpose of this image is to make sure that the bike is truly locked to something and um, to make sure that this bike, we also have a good image of the bike in case we need to find this bike again. So once I take the picture and use this photo, our AI will be able to verify and see if this image is a good image. And it is determined that this image is a good image. Um, and we're still trying to uh, test with this technology. Um, we definitely want to improve on this in the future. But now we can see our receipt with our total information, our, our the money spent, the trip details, one way, and after that we can safely return home.